<laughs> so stupid! Scroll of the Gun is a title that immediately piqued my interest when I first saw this trailer. It is a truly unique concept that immediately reminded me of Goat Simulator. A quirky and silly sandbox game where you control a goat, completing bizarre objectives. <laughs> I had the chance to try this game for free courtesy of Maximum Entertainment through Lurk It in celebration of the console launch. All the gameplay footage in this video is captured on the PS5. Big thanks to Maximum Entertainment and Lurk It for the free key. The game kicks off with a rather loose narrative that continues throughout. A squirrel stumbles upon a top secret facility and mistakes an experimental gadget for a massive golden acorn. From there, you take control of the squirrel. The way you move and the character's lively, bouncy nature are all done brilliantly. The controls are intuitive and responsive, reacting well with your every move. After solving the first puzzle, you consume the device, and before you know it, the government is chasing you. A comical cutscene introduces you to the first firearm, and that's when the real adventure kicks off. Oh, oh, fussy cuffs, huh? Ah! The game does a fantastic job demonstrating its core mechanics and the hero you'll encounter during your time with it. The tutorial area initially threw me off. It's quite a compact level making it seem more like a 3D platformer than a sandbox experience, but that's fine, I enjoy platformers. Once you leave the tutorial, however, the world opens up and you're fully immersed in the sandbox. As I mentioned with the tutorial area, the sandbox environment feels relatively small at first, but it expands as you progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, it does open up the other part, cool. While playing, I'd notice some Super Mario Odyssey influences in the game's mechanics. You can complete various tasks to collect golden acorns, which you can then use to unlock new weapons, vehicles, and cosmetic items. Ah, I got Tuxedo, cool. Eh, hey, flashy. Regular acorns act as a health refill and as a currency. When you die, you lose a decent chunk, but they're easy to gather again. You'll have key objectives to push the story forward, but a lot of the game's progression happens when you explore in a cover of points of interest. Oh, what? Whoa, whoa, what? Oh. That escalated really quickly! Navigation is straightforward. You scurry around on foot as a squirrel, and if you choose, you can carry a weapon. And really, why wouldn't you want to be an armed squirrel? Depending on the weapon and the outfit you're wearing, your speed will be affected. You can also double jump when carrying a firearm, and the type of weapon changes on how you can leap. The SMG works best for this, and here's why. Yeah, it lets you jump higher than any other weapon with decent control, which helps make the experience more dynamic. The weight of the gun doesn't slow down your car either. Speaking of the car, it's the first vehicle you'll unlock and makes it much easier to get around. It controls well and feels solid, like an RC car. One of the highlights is that you can zoom through a skate park collecting acorns as you go. When you get some air, you can rotate the car mid-flight while staying inside it. There are additional vehicles to unlock, but I won't spoil them for you. There's a lot to discover, and I think it's best experienced firsthand. This game is definitely a collectathon, a genre that died over a decade ago, but is making a big comeback in the indie scene. Your primary collectible is the Golden Acorn, which can be found out in the open, earned through objectives, or unlocked by solving puzzles. Hey, I did it! What did I do? Oh. <laughs> Along with Golden Acorns, you can collect cosmetics and photo filters for the game's photo mode. I didn't care much for the photo filters since I really use photo modes in games, but the outfits and accessories are a different story. It's great being able to customize how your squirrel looks while running around, and some outfits have practical benefits. I came across a few during my playthrough. The first was a bomb suit which I was told would be useful for a certain area, but I ended up improvising and jumping through the minefield, and found the suit after I completed the objective. Well, I did it without the bomb suit, but now I have the bomb suit. Later I found a diving suit that improved my swimming control. Some outfits even change the squirrel's running animation, which is a nice attention to detail. Another great touch is that the tile screen reflects your selected outfit from your saved game. I also overlooked these flagpoles early on, which show different objectives for various areas of the map and offer hints to obtain golden acorns. If you're a completionist, there's plenty to find and gather throughout the game. Sound design and music in this game is done very well. Gunshots from various weapons sound authentic. Explosions are big and impactful. The music is solid too, though it's a bit limited. What you will hear from the music starts off strong on the title screen. It has a great James Bond vibe, which immediately caught my ear when I started the game. Never be able to run. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Some 007 crap. <laughs> Throughout, the soundtrack covers a range of genres, including orchestral, rock, and instrumental. With the number of tracks is a bit sparse, the same music plays during boss fights, which make it a bit repetitive, mainly due to it having lyrics. The title theme does have vocals, though you'll not hear that on a loop compared to the track used for boss fights. The main theme was pretty memorable and was stuck in my head for a while after playing the game. A nice touch is how it changes based on the environment, much like Banjo-Kazooie, which made exploring feel very fresh. Woo! <laughs> Despite all the great elements this game has to offer, there are some notable issues I'd like to mention. A few of these are design choices, and the other bit is just some jank, honestly. Nothing game-breaking, but a few rough spots that could benefit from some polish. For example, you'll notice occasional frame drops when NPCs are seen from a distance. It's not uncommon in games that try to save memory while doing this, but it can be a little jarring. Sometimes NPCs get stuck or behave oddly, though these quirks don't usually hinder the game much. One design choice that frustrated me was the Agency Tower. The Agency Tower. Ooh. It can be annoying for one main reason. There are two walls to climb, each leading to two different objectives. One wall is fairly easy to scale, but the other is higher and requires careful steering to keep hitting those boosts as you climb. The problem is that at a certain point, you lose sight of your vehicle, and it becomes a struggle to climb without falling. After two hours and more attempts, I want to admit I finally got the hang of it, but I felt like it could have been designed way better. I did it, Jesus, dude. Another frustration was with some of the boss fights. For instance, in the first boss encounter, you're tasked with taking down an enemy tank. The tank has a shield that is protecting the gunner and the boss. It took me a while to figure out how to disable it. The game does offer hints, but I wasn't paying close enough attention at first. To destroy the shield, you need to first take out the tracks, which is rather obvious. But to take out the shield, you have to go under the tank while it's repairing and destroy some other icons. The best thing about the shield is that once it's taken out, it's out for the rest of the fight. Once you have done this, you have to make your way up to the top of the tank. Then you can shoot the hatch that's covering up the boss. There are some grenades in the back to drop inside to damage him. I struggled a bit here because the gunner was quite fast and would easily fling me across the arena. I was never able to incapacitate him. There's also an odd issue with the bulldozer blade on the tank. If your gun gets too close and you want to pick it back up, well that hitbox is janky and you're, we're going to ragdoll immediately. There was one moment during the boss fight where the game just bugged out in a very unique way. The game just glitched. Yeah, that happened! I looked up to see if there was a failsafe for failing too many times, but no, this was just a glitch. Fortunately, the boss took itself out after a while, which was a relief because I was really ready to move on. This was one of the most bizarre bugs I've ever encountered in the game. Frustrations, the puzzles far away the negatives. The humor, the puzzles, and the gameplay loop will definitely keep you entertained. If you enjoy quirky sandboxes and collectathons, this is absolutely a game worth picking up and checking out.